The Lifetime Series is one of the biggest cycling series in the world. It consists of six mountain bike slash gravel events. It's got the 30 top women, 30 top men, and I didn't get in. And it's my goal this year to prove that I should have made the cut. In the last video, I explained a little bit about why goals are so important for performance and why setting goals is good for you. But obviously from the number of views of that video, nobody cares. I guess setting goals doesn't get people's heart rate up like supplements and stuff. P.S. Creatine video coming soon. But nonetheless, here I am talking about 2024 and my goals. So maybe this video isn't for you. Maybe it's more for me because I need this video, because now I'm invoking the audience effect. Everybody that watches this video is now one of my accountability partners to hold me steady, uh, keep me focused on all these goals that I'm about to share to the world. So come along for the journey, guys. Can't wait. So here they are, Dizzle's 2024 goals. I've got a tattoo on my right leg, right under my spandex. Just a good placement for a tattoo. If you're looking to get a tattoo, that's a good spot to get one. And it says, Soli Deo Gloria. That means glory to God alone in Latin. And that is a constant reminder to me that I do all things for the glory of God. So I start out with my number one goal being glorify God. I'm hesitant to put this right at the beginning of my video because this is probably going to mean a lot of people are going to immediately click off the video because I'm talking about God, but there's a reason that it's number one and that's because it's the most important goal that I have. It's always an overarching goal of mine in all aspects of my life to glorify God in all that I do, but especially in cycling. So that tattoo and where it was placed right under my spandex line so that every time I race my bike, it shows right there is a constant reminder specifically towards cycling because I think cycling is obviously something I'm gifted at. I was gonna say talented, but whew, that, that opens up a whole can of worms. And it's obviously something that I'm passionate about, but it's also something that I can get very easily self-centered on. It's easy to get so self-focused in cycling because every race you enter in, the goal is to beat everybody else and win. So it's a constant reminder that in all that I do, I want to glorify God, and that is just as important in cycling as it is in every other realm of my life. Before I get into some of the really race-specific goals, I want to talk about some more process-oriented goals in that I want to talk about my training. Like, What am I going to do or what are my goals with, with my training for the year? My big goal is to consistently get between 20 and 25 hours of training on per week, and that's consistently. Like, Every week that I'm training, I want to get 20 plus hours. Last year, I got a lot of 20 plus hours, but wasn't super consistent about it. And now I really want to get up to that 25 hour mark more and more and more and make that a more regular thing. I saw huge improvements just by increasing my volume last year by adding in more and more endurance riding. So that's a big goal for this year. I think it's doable. It's going to be difficult. It's right on that realm of reality because last year I was able to do it. So this is going to involve a lot of consistency and volume, obviously. Consistency is key. Consistency is huge to training. That means more green boxes on your training than any other color. Uh, and I want to talk about one more. So the, the, the training triangle is three things. It's got consistency, and then you've got volume, which is your overall training, and then you've got training time, and then you've got intensity. And I... I'm talking about those two, and I do want to point out that intensity does exist, but my intensity is probably not going to change that much this year uh, because my racing is getting more and more endurance focused, and so I really feel like I need to work more and more on my volume and my endurance more than my intensity. So the intensity sessions have always have always been something that I've been good at, getting in my two intensity sessions a week, and I think those will look fairly similar to years past, other than they might be a little bit longer in duration than, than years past. Before I get to my race goals for 2024, I want to talk about one of the sponsors who's been supporting me for years now, and that is Rigged Supply. As you can see, the t-shirt I wore this just for this video, I planned this out. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go for preparation. Anyways, uh, Rigged Supply They've been a huge supporter of me. They like what I'm doing. I like what they're doing. Basically what they're doing, if you don't know what they're doing, I'll give you the gist of it. They make things that go inside of your hitch on your car to sum it, to kind of boil it down. 
but they make really good things that go into your hitch. The most relevant one for you, since you're probably watching this cycling related content, is their Ramble Rack. Yeah, you heard me right. That is the coolest name for a bike rack if I've ever heard one, the Ramble Rack. Basically, it's the last bike rack you'll ever buy. This thing is like freaking indestructible. You could sledgehammer this thing. Uh, just to give you an idea, look, this is what we did at the at, in, in their factory when I got my hands on my first Ramble Rack. Check this out. is wicked awesome uh, it's got all kinds of accessories you can get for it it looks super cool you're gonna have the coolest bike rack at the bike race if you don't if you don't win the race at, at least you've got that you, you're the winner of the coolest bike rack award uh, so yeah check it out link is down in the description below uh, I really want to try to promote rigged because they're a huge supporter of mine and they're on board again for this year and they're stoked that I'm going to be doing more gravel and off-road stuff when you think about the 2024 race calendar, which races come to mind? And whichever races you just thought about are probably the ones that should be your A races. They're probably the ones that mean the most to you. They're, they're the ones that stick out. When I think about 2024 and which races stick out for me, it's BWR California, it's Unbound 200, Leadville, can't believe I'm saying that, and Big Sugar. All of those events are, are big ones for me. And I think I'm going to target all four of those. And the way that I choose that is because I get excited for those races. I've done BWR California and I've done Big Sugar. And I've had pretty good results at both of those races. But I think that I've got some unmet potential at both of those races where I could really get a good result because those events suit me very well. Uh, and, and I enjoy them. Like they're a lot of fun. Both of those events were a lot of fun. So those are two big ones. Unbound 200. I've got some unfinished business with this one because in 2018, I think, I made it to mile 175 and dropped out. So I do have big hopes to finish, but also finish well at that race. I think it does suit me uh, suit me well. And then Leadville, that was kind of the outlier here uh, because I, I hate elevation. I don't even have a mountain bike right now, but for some reason that one stands out. And I think it's just because it's such a big race, seeing all the hype about it last year, knowing that if I do it and I do it right, it's going to take at least a month of preparation just to get uh, a little bit adjusted to the elevation and the altitude. Um, so that one stands out and I kind of hate that. Like I don't, I, I, part of me doesn't even want to do that event. Part of me doesn't even know if I'm going to do the event. I didn't even apply for the lottery. So I still don't know. Like I think if I go, maybe I'll go to Lutzen 99 or somebody said I should do that race. And so Maybe I should do Lutzen, qualify, go. I, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. We'll see how I feel. But that one stands out as well. And you may notice that I didn't even talk about any like results. I didn't say top 10 or top 20 because it's hard to say that with these races. I don't know who's going to be at BWR California. Like last year, almost all the hitters were there, but Keegan wasn't there because Sea Otter was the next week and that's a priority race for him. This year it's swapped. So BWR California is actually after Sea Otter. And so there might be more people sticking around to do Beat Up Air California, which may make it harder to get a really good result at that race. But regardless, I want to get a good result there. You had to pin me down and say, hey, what place do you want to get? Obviously, I would say I want to win. Uh, but I think realistically on a really, really good day, I'm probably shooting for a top 10 at that race. Um, Unbound, you know, I've only ever not finished that race, so... I don't know. Top 10 would be amazing, but that's probably a stretch. I think top 20 is a little bit more realistic, especially since it's some somewhat in uncharted territories. And then Big Sugar, I think that that's a good one that I have the potential to get a really good result at. I think a top 10 there would be good as well. That's if you had to pin me down and say, you know, what are the results? I didn't get into the Lifetime Grand Prix this year. And I really wanted to get into the Lifetime Grand Prix. So when I didn't get in, it kind of stung a little bit. I mean, like, I think it stung so bad because I really thought I was in. The day before they announced the top 30 men and women who, who they selected to be in, they put out a post saying tomorrow's the day. And literally, like, 90% of the comments had my name mentioned in it. So if there was a people's favorite 
thank you people, I think I would have won the people's vote, uh, which is crazy because I don't think I've ever been popular and I don't want to be popular, but here I am and maybe I'm not even popular. I don't know. Maybe most of those comments were just people making fun of me. Probably, that's probably more accurate, but, but that's kind of embarrassing too because a couple years ago, everybody was like, oh yeah, like only the popular kids get in and here I am kind of popular now and uh, I didn't get in. And so that kind of stings even more because if they're selecting based off of who they think is the fastest, they either don't think that I'm fast enough to be in their series or I just didn't prove to them that I am fast enough to be in their series. And hopefully it's the latter. And hopefully my goal in 2024 is to prove to them that they missed out when they, when they didn't put me in their series. And with all that being said, I hope that I get in for 2025 because I think that opens up a lot of doors. I like most of those races, and uh, it's just a lot of excitement around that series, so obviously I want to be a part of it. I'm not going to lie, it's kind of awkward talking about finances, especially on YouTube, but I've never considered myself a pro cyclist because I've never gotten a paycheck for racing my bike. Of course, I've won some random prize money at some races, but that's random, and you never know how much, and you kind of have to split it with teammates a lot of times, and by the end of the year, you probably spent more than you won anyways, and so it's kind of a wash. Uh, so my goal for 2024 is to make money as a bike racer, and I think it's going to happen. Basically, it's kind of wishy-washy, because you don't know. Because right now, I'm doing the whole privateer thing, which I'm kind of new at. And basically, what you do as a privateer is you, you get as much of a race budget as you can through sponsorship uh, and trying to get as many things covered as far as expenses go. And then you just hope that you don't spend more than you brought in. So the goal is acquire a race budget of X dollars and spend less than that so that whatever's left over, I can consider a salary. That's the goal for this year. I think it's going to happen. The goal is to continue getting into all of this gravel stuff and con to continue to build relationships with brands and hopefully grow these sponsorships into lasting relationships so that that budget can continue to grow along with the salary portion of that. Um, so if you want to, if you want to sponsor me, I'm now accepting sponsorship applications. So, uh, submit those via email. This one's probably a stretch goal because at the current rate, I think I'm only getting like 20 new subscribers per video. So I think that means I'd have to do like 2000 videos this year to get up to 50,000 subscribers. So this is probably a stretch, but I'm going to put it out there anyways, because that is a goal of mine. I would love to get up to 50,000 subscribers. And by me saying this, you guys can hold me accountable. And I'm hoping that it'll, there will be some momentum behind it. You know, I've already started the new year, right? And I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, pop off two YouTube videos every single week. And hopefully once racing starts up, I can start to incorporate some race footage as well. Um, because those are obviously the really good ones that I do uh, of me with the camera on my bike and you guys watching. And that's way better than you just watching me talk to the camera because that's kind of lame, but there's no racing going on. So this is what you get. I mean, come on. If people are going to watch Phil Gaiman's crappy videos, like can't they watch mine too? This is the, uh, chamois butter. You rub it on your crotch. So, yep, that's the plan for 2024. Oh, yeah, don't forget the ever-present Beat Dylan goal. <laughs> that's always a goal. I mean, like, that's like my life motto, Beat Dylan. Can't forget about that one. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.